Everything can be taken from a man or woman, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's response to any set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. This is Walking Your Talk, a personal development podcast about leadership, authenticity, and courage. I'm Carolyn Taylor, and I've spent my life working with leaders in organizations on how to change their culture. But this is much more personal. If you want to be known as someone who walks your talk at work and beyond, then this podcast is for you. That's Holocaust survivor Viktor Frankl in his book, Man's Search for Meaning. Today, I'm going to cover one of the most powerful and empowering changes to how we view the world. Honestly, you pull this one off, and I assure you that the result will be that you will feel far more in control of what happens in your life and much more able to take ownership and to take effective action to make improvements to the outcomes that you're seeking. It all starts with a change in language, which forces a change in perception. I've always found that language, when I listen to people speaking, it gives me an indication of the mindsets that they've got going on, the patterns of thinking that they've got going on behind, because language is a great betrayer of those. But similarly, the reverse, that if you are able to practice changing your language, it forces a dissonance in your mind, which in turn can change the way that you think. So imagine that there were no shoulds or have tos in your language, but only I choose to. I'm suggesting nothing less in this episode. Because that's what I think Viktor Frankl means when he says that the final freedom is to choose our way and our attitude and our response to any set of circumstances. And he certainly was facing circumstances that most people would consider justified a pretty negative response. His book shows how he found another way. So let me give you some examples. I was working a few months ago with a regional team who had been underperforming for quite a long time. And a part of the process I always use is I speak to each individual member of the team before I, we go on an offsite. And they told me that their head office was evaluating their market incorrectly that they were being compared to other countries where market conditions were different. And I spoke to, there must have been about 15 of them in the team, and almost all of them gave me the same story with minor variations. So what had happened was that they had, both individually and actually collectively, built a response to the circumstance of being set these goals that they thought were too high. Let's say they were set a goal of 200 million revenue. And their response was resentment and feeling powerless. They felt they weren't being listened to. They felt disempowered. They felt that they didn't have any answers. They felt that they were being set crazy goals and then were being given a hard time because they weren't achieving them. Apparently, there were one or two individuals in the head office who had actually, in their view, had it in for them. And we're actually looking for an opportunity to replace some of the regional team with some other people who these people in head office were close to or close friends to. So there was a whole kind of story running behind, almost one of conspiracy and micromanagement and, you know, being sort of bullied into numbers they didn't really believe in. It all kind of tied together into this story, into this mental model they had about what the truth was. So when I asked them about empowerment, which was one of their company's goals, they all basically blamed these bosses. And they said, especially the ones in head office, and they said that, you know, they were really cynical about these aspirations to, for empowerment because, you know, look how these people were behaving and they were just imposing these goals on them and, you know, it was all ridiculous. Now, this blaming of other people either of head office if you're in a region and you're in a big organization, or perhaps your partner if you're in a small organization. 
where you kind of go, we have to, I have to, we have to make these numbers. We have no choice. We must. We're being told it has to be this way. Is really common. It's probably one of the most common things that I've come across in my career. But what happens is that this attitude really narrows your perspective. You become, you feel disempowered, and you kind of start feeling like there are no possibilities. And what happens, and these are the exercises that I played around with with this team, and which I'm hoping that you'll be able to play with yourself, is that when we started changing the language and said, for example, well, we choose to set 200 million as our revenue goal. We choose that stretch. And we choose to explore every possibility. Now, even if that sounds ridiculous, and you know or they knew that they hadn't, just even that language does something really strange to the brain. Because what it does is, okay, if we had chosen this, what would we be doing right now? We would be, you know, exploring possibilities. We would be opening ourselves up to doing things we'd never done before. We would be looking at all the risks. We would be working it very differently. We would be feeling excited. And so just changing from we have to and they did it to us to we choose these numbers and we want to do this produces a really different way of thinking and dramatically increases the possibility, one, that you feel much more empowered, but two, importantly, that you then use that sense of power to actually achieve what you want to achieve. So by the way, the result of that was they actually turned the business around in a couple of months from when we did the work together. Perhaps even more important was that they felt empowered. So nothing had changed on the outside. Head office was still head office. Maybe they were not listening people. Maybe they were unreasonable folks. Maybe they were even a bit bullying. But it didn't matter anymore. Because from an empowerment perspective, the team had grabbed that for themselves. They hadn't waited to be granted it. They had taken empowerment. And they had taken ownership. And that had changed the way that they thought. It doesn't actually matter from an empowerment perspective what the people in head office were like. Because as we discussed in the previous two episodes, what they'd done is they had grabbed empowerment for themselves and made things happen. So the phrase we chose to, it can actually be substituted anywhere where you feel you have a have to. Try this one. Here's a different one. This is also a true story. You hate your job. You hate your boss. Opportunities are non-existent. This is somebody I was coaching, but I've met several people like that. You want to leave, but you have to stay because your children can't change schools right now. And changing companies would involve changing cities. So that's the story. Feel helpless, feels disempowered. You're living it. You feel trapped. You feel trapped by this organization. You feel trapped by the fact that the kids are now locked into schools. You don't want to go. So how about I choose to stay because I choose and I want to prioritize my children's stability? Same circumstances, but a different mental model. And instantly, the fact that I'm choosing to do that choosing to prioritize my children makes me feel empowered. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel perhaps that I am doing a bit of a sacrifice, but it's a good sacrifice. Guess what? And this is what happened with this person I was coaching, that the different state of mind actually led to different conversations. It opened up possibilities for exploration that they hadn't done before. So one of them was actually with, with his children, you know, sitting down with his children and saying, look, this is the decision we've made. You know, we're prioritizing your stability at the moment over you know, my taking a look at another opportunity, which would take us to another city. Now, in the case of this person, that was the way they ended up. The, the children agreed that it really did feel important. 
But there could also have been the possibility when they actually had that conversation with the children that they would have had a very different point of view. But somehow when you're feeling like I have to, I have to, you never have that conversation. But what also happened was that he started to explore other forms of employment or being self-employed or what else could he do and still stay in that same city. But even within this employer, he actually ended up having a very different conversation because again, without the resentment, without that feeling of disempowerment, he had this conversation with his boss that actually he was really valuable in a particular set of experience he had related to launching products. So they actually worked out a role in the company where he would be valuable over five years and that he would feel in control. So from going from this feeling of resentment and disempowerment came away feeling like I am in control, I've made a choice, I've had all the right conversations, it's feeling good. And there would have been a number of other outcomes that might have happened. So there are two examples, but there are many, many more you'll find. So how you choose to respond to any situation is always 100% your choice. Some of you may have heard the expression above the line, and that really just means the ability to respond, a response ability, which allows me to have that ability to respond. And Below the line, some people call it, is actually blaming or justifying, feeling helpless and feeling that it's all outside of myself. But it starts with the language, that language of empowerment. And so the exercise this week is all about practicing changing your language in order to start changing your mindset. So think of situations where you do feel particularly powerless, disempowered, blaming, justifying, seeing all the problems as being outside of yourself. Write some of them down, perhaps. And then practice some of these other phrases. Here are a few to try. Given X, Y, Z. So given that head office has this point of view about what our revenue should be, given that our children are in these schools right now, then how am I going to choose to respond? So that phrase, given X, then Y, is a great way to start. What new opportunities then? What new ways to explore? How can I respond? And you might say, given X, I haven't yet found a way to respond. But that kind of leaves you open then to the possibility that you will in the future. Or given X, I'm exploring possibilities to do Y, or I'm choosing to do Z. So try that and then catch yourself with those have tos. You know, I have to go to work now. No, 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 you don't have to go to work now. You choose to go to work now so that you don't get a reputation for always being late and eventually get fired because you want to keep your job. So very much fair enough. But it is your choice. I have to go to all these meetings. No, you choose to go to these meetings because you don't want people to think that you don't care. See, it's just that little shift in thinking. But wow, it does make a difference. So that's the key message for today, that we can always choose how we respond to any situation and by making better choices and knowing that we have a choice, we end up feeling empowered. So if this podcast has been meaningful for you and you'd like to share it with others, please let other people know and put it on social media. And I look forward to seeing you next week when we're going to cover the leader's role in the empowerment equation. Thank you for listening and I'll see you then.